I found the top 10 most desirable careers for young people. Yes, somebody out there actually did a study where they surveyed a bunch of young people and asked them what careers they wanted to get into in the future. Now, a lot of these careers are exactly what you would expect, but some of them are really surprising. And number one on the list is actually my career. Well, sort of. Do you want to get paid to argue? Do you want to be able to wear a suit all the time? And do you want to make sure everybody else follows the rules while you don't follow them yourself? Well, you might want to consider being number 10 on this list, which is one of the most popular careers that a lot of people want to get into, which is lawyer at 6.4%. That's right, 6.4% of young people want to be lawyers as their profession. Now, I'm not surprised to see this one here. I mean, if you think about it, there's lots of movies about lawyers there's lots of tv shows like suits and on top of that this used to be considered a prestigious career so parents <laughs> tend to kind of push their kids into going into this type of career but with that being said i made an entire video about why being a lawyer is overrated it's extremely competitive there's not nearly as much opportunity as there was before and it's also saturated and on top of that you are going to work ridiculously long hours for a very long time before you are even able to secure a decent job and one great quote by Charles Dickens is if there were no bad people there would be no good lawyers but yeah being a lawyer is kind of like being a quarterback for legal football you get to make strategic moves to score a win for your clients while dodging any legal tackles now the next one on this list is a career that's extremely appealing to introverts now a lot of us grow up reading our favorite books like Harry Potter or Game of Thrones and some of us imagine that when we get older we can become writers ourselves and the next one on this list appeals especially to people who are introverted and love writing. And that is, of course, becoming a writer at 8.4% of people who want to do that when they grow up. Now, traditionally, this wasn't always one of the best careers. What did he say? Hey. In fact, there's a quote that goes, the freelance writer is a man who is paid per piece or per word or perhaps. And that's because a lot of the time writers are not paid very good money. But with that being said, in recent times with the rise of the creator economy, this career has been making a massive comeback. And the reason for that is because all good content, whether it's a video or a podcast, or of course a blog, something that's written, originates from good writing. That's right. Almost all successful YouTubers script their content. Even if it's a vlog that seems really spontaneous, usually they think about what they're going to do beforehand. And the reason for that is because they're trying to tell a good story. So although I would almost never recommend getting an English degree or a creative writing degree, I do think this career is making a comeback and there is a ton of opportunity. And I know what you're thinking you're probably thinking, oh, ChatGPT is going to take away all the writers' jobs. And I completely disagree with that. I think ChatGPT is going to make writing even more valuable. The next one on the list is going to be for those people who can't do anything other than either playing sports or dreaming about playing sports. And a very, very small percentage of these people get to play sports professionally. But a much bigger percentage of people can make a living by teaching others how to play sports, aka athletes and coaches. And about 11.9% of people dream dream of becoming either an athlete or a teacher. So this is another one of those where unless you're in the top 99.99th percentile, you're probably not going to be paid to be a professional athlete. But with that being said, if you really love baseball, for instance, there's a good chance you could get a job that is baseball related. And another thing you could do is you could start making content about baseball. So there are a lot of opportunities out there for you to make money following your passion, doing what you love. But a lot of the time you are gonna have to think outside of the box. Now, I personally have a massive amount of respect for athletes. I'm also a huge fan of just about all sports out there. My two favorite sports are probably MMA and boxing. And I have a ridiculous amount of respect for anybody who does that stuff professionally. They're basically like the modern day gladiators. And there's a great quote, an athlete cannot run with money in his pockets. He must run with hope in his heart and dreams in his head, right? You kind of have to be a little bit crazy in my opinion to do boxing boxing or MMA professionally. And the next one on the list is also very tough to get into. And if you are lucky enough to get into it, everyone is probably going to hate you and distrust you. And that is going to be a TV presenter. I think there was a survey done that 80% of Americans do not trust the news. And uh, yeah, 
probably for good reason. But with that being said, about 12.5% of kids want to be TV presenters. Now I would say with this one, if you want to do a job that's very similar, but has a much higher chance of success, I would consider becoming an independent journalist. So you would be covering the news, but you would be doing it in video form on YouTube as well as your own blog. And journalism is kind of a lost art that used to be all about exposing corruption and making sure that people are playing by the rules. And in recent times, journalism is more about actually covering up corruption. So because of this, there is a massive amount of demand for independent journalists who actually cover it. A great example of this is CoffeeZilla. CoffeeZilla is absolutely blown up in recent years by covering different crypto scams. Now the next one on the list is one that has probably about a hundred different TV shows and maybe a thousand different movies that were made about it. And this is one that's actually very realistic for you to get into if it's something that you want to do. And if you get into this, you'll get to save lives, wear scrubs, and play with a bunch of cool medical gadgets. And that is of course becoming a doctor or a nurse. And about 13.5% of people want to get into this. Now this is one, especially the doctor part, where I personally think for most people, it's pretty overrated. This is another one where parents are constantly trying to force their kids into it. There's lots of different TV shows. It's always glamorized in movies and the news. And for that reason, I think a lot of people get into it for the wrong reason. And that's why medical doctors have some of the highest depression rates as well as some of the lowest job satisfaction scores. But I definitely can see why getting into the medical field in general is so attractive. And that's why I myself went into the medical field. I actually ended up getting a doctorate and I became a pharmacist. And if you look at medical careers, they do have some of the highest highest meaning scores. And meaning is basically a long-term indicator of your overall happiness in the career. But medical doctor actually has some of the lowest scores out of all the different health careers. So this is definitely one where you want to do your research before you go into it. Do not go into this one just because your family wants you to, or because there's a bunch of cool shows that you watch about it, or because you hear about it all the time on the news and you think it's going to get you a lot of clout. Now the next one on the list is one of my absolute favorite subjects. There was a short period of my life where this is what I wanted to do as well. And this is also one that until recently, it was incredibly difficult to get into, and that is becoming a filmmaker. About 13.5% of young people want to get into this. Now, Hollywood is notorious for being known to be incredibly difficult to break into. And one of the main reasons for that is because there is a bunch of gatekeepers. And a lot of these gatekeepers were people like Harvey Weinstein. And there are countless examples of extremely talented writers, directors, etc., that never made it in Hollywood. Now, recently, because of the rise of the creator economy and the internet, there's been a lot more opportunity in filmmaking. And there have been many talented people who have found success in indie films or on Netflix or by just starting to create videos and then put them up on YouTube. A great example of this is Jordan Peele, who started his career out by making comedy sketches and then uploading them to YouTube on his channel, Key and Peele. He then leveraged that to become a Hollywood director and made some great films like Us, Get Out, and Nope. So it's definitely getting better, but there's still a ton of gatekeeping and I think I speak for most normal human beings out there when I say that we're really tired of all the woke propaganda and virtue signaling that we're constantly seeing in Hollywood. But with that being said, the Hollywood monopoly is breaking and there's a lot of great alternatives that are popping up. So I think the smartest way to get into this would be by starting to create content online and building a personal brand. Now the next one on the list is in the same industry and a lot of the same thing goes for it, but you're gonna be the star of the show, right? You're gonna be the person that the camera is on like 80% of the time. And that is of course because becoming an actor. And this one comes in at about 15.7%. And a good quote with this one is, if you're an actor, even a successful one, you're still waiting for the phone to ring. So I would give all of the same advice that I gave to filmmakers to actors. A smart move would be to start building your personal brand and making content online. Now the next one on the list is also going to be content and it's gonna be the kind that probably evokes the most emotion out of any type of art. And that is of course becoming a singer. So about 16% of kids want to become a musician or a singer of some sort. I've heard people say that music is the one thing that makes life worth living. And there's one quote, without music, life would be a mistake. Now at this one, I give the same exact advice. You would want to start making content. And this is exactly what Justin Bieber did in order to get discovered. And even if you don't wanna be a pop star, you can still make money by making music for a living, right? So there was one school teacher who went from being deep in debt to making millions of dollars within a few years. And this is Miss Rachel who owns the YouTube show Songs for Littles. And she basically uses song in order to inspire and teach children. With the next one on the list, you can get paid to share every little detail of your life with other people, from your mundane morning routines to your deepest thoughts and musings. 
And this is exactly what Casey Neistat did in order to become a worldwide known brand. And that is of course blogging or vlogging. And this one is at 18.1%. Now blogging is where you would share your thoughts with the written word. So you'd either have a blog or a newsletter. And then vlogging is where you take people through your day-to-day -day life, but you do it with video. And this is kind of like planting a seed of creativity that grows into a tree of expression. And the next one on the list is very similar, but it comes in at 34.1% one percent of people wanting to get into it and this is of course what I am doing but I do have a little bit of a problem with calling this a job and that is of course being a youtuber so being a youtuber is kind of half job and half entrepreneurship because technically you are getting paid by YouTube to do this in the form of AdSense but there's also a lot of stuff you can do on the side to make money in other ways but over 34 percent of young people want to be youtubers when they grow up and I'm gonna be honest with you it's a lot of hard work work and dedication. But with that being said, this is a very realistic goal. It's much more realistic, for instance, than becoming a filmmaker or an actor. And this is truly a job where you can literally make money doing your passion. And as somebody who's tried a lot of different jobs out there, this is definitely my favorite job that I've ever had. But with that being said, I do have some pro tips for you if you want to try to get into this. First of all, the smartest thing, like the biggest brain thing you could possibly do in order to maximize your chances of being successful as a YouTuber is to get paid to learn how to do YouTube. Now, how the heck do you do that? Because you're probably thinking, Shane, it costs a lot of money. You have to buy a camera. That's going to be a thousand dollars. Then you have to learn how to edit and you have to learn how to make thumbnails and it's a lot of work. Well, you can actually get paid to learn YouTube by working for a YouTuber. And this is one of those opportunities that I talk about quite a bit on this channel. So there are positions out there where you can get paid really good money to work for big YouTubers. So for instance, Scriptwriter is one. Another really good one is becoming what's known as a retention editor. And then another really good career you could get into is becoming a content strategist. And I'm telling you right now, if you work for a successful YouTuber, that is like the smartest way to learn the business of YouTube and how to be successful on here. So that is what the big brain people of the world are doing. Now, if you don't want to work for a YouTuber, you can still be successful on YouTube, but it's going to take a lot of time and effort. You're probably going to have to upload at least 30 videos before you finally have one that pops off and does really well. So yeah, YouTube absolutely changed my life. It's incredible. I get to combine a bunch of my different passions and make them into YouTube videos. And after realizing that counting pills for a living wasn't going to be my calling, I traded in my white coat for a camera and I helped thousands of people find their dream careers and land jobs. And I actually made a list of the best remote jobs and I ranked them from S tier, which is the best, to F tier, which is the worst. And you can check that out by clicking right here.